Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be going over the basic setup of a video go encoder for live streaming. Let's get started. The equipment we'll be using today is a camera, the Sony A7R2, a video cable, an external microphone. You don't have to use an external mic, you could use the onboard mics on the camera, an audio cable, the video go encoder, two DBI antennas, and in this case an iPad to configure the device to a content delivery network. You can also use a phone or a laptop for this as well. For starters, you're going to want to get your external microphone hooked up to your camera. So we'll grab our standard three and a half millimeter audio cable here and connect it to the mic. Again, you don't have to have an external microphone for this. Next, we'll reach for our video cable. Our current setup calls for a micro HDMI to HDMI, and we'll plug that micro end into the camera. All right, now that those cables are hooked up, we're gonna set our camera aside and start working with our encoder. We'll go over all these buttons on the front, but first let's take a look at the back. There are two SMA connectors for Wi-Fi connectivity, and then there's also an Ethernet port for a hardwired option. We'll be working over a Wi-Fi connection today, so we'll reach for our two DVI antennas and attach them to the SMA connectors. Once you got those on there nice and snug, we're going to orient them vertically, and then we'll move on to powering our device through this USB Type-C input here. There's also an internal battery, but for our purposes, we're gonna use the AC power supply. Next, we're gonna work on hooking up our camera. Uh, you can either use the HDMI input or the 3G SDI input. Uh, as stated earlier, we're working with an HDMI, so we'll plug that in now, and then we'll move on to our audio input. Again, this is a standard three and a half millimeter cable and we'll plug it in just below the USB Type-C power input, located on the left side marked with the microphone. Now that we've got everything hooked up, it's time to power on our device. So to do that, you'll just hold down the power button on the front. Also on the front is a broadcast button, which you can use to stop and start your broadcast, an OLED display, and a menu navigation button. Now that we're all powered up, it's time to start configuring our device. So if you toggle down, you'll see an IP address being displayed. That's basically the video go creating its own Wi-Fi network that we'll use later to connect our iPad. Next, we'll grab our iPad and the first thing we're gonna do is download the video app from the App Store. So you'll look for the icon that we have in the upper left corner there and hit download. And when you're typing in your search, it's important to remember that the app is called Video, not Video Go. Okay, now that we've got our app downloaded, it's time to connect to the Wi-Fi network that's being generated by the Video Go. To find your network ID, look on the front OLED display of your device. It will correspond with an available Wi-Fi network. Ours is VideoGo00371. We'll go ahead and select that. Once connected, we'll navigate over to the Video app. Then click on our device and open up this page. You'll notice that the video feed is coming through, which is good. So right now we're on a Wi-Fi network generated by the VideoGo. And what we want to do is connect to a network generated by our router, which is going to give us internet access and enable us to deliver our content to its final destination. So we'll walk through the steps here on how to do that. We'll start by clicking on settings. This will bring up a menu list. You will select network and then wireless. Then you'll select client mode and scan for networks where you will locate your Wi-Fi network. So once you log into your network, you'll get prompted by this warning here. This is a good thing. 
it's basically letting you know that we are moving to the Wi-Fi network generated by our router, which will give us internet access. This also means we'll need to connect our iPad to the same network so that we can continue to configure our video go. So we'll hit apply here. That will bring up this page. We'll close out of our video app and open the device settings where we will locate the Wi-Fi network and connect our iPad to that. So both devices are now on the Wi-Fi network generated by the router. Once that's connected, go back into your video app and select your device. Next, we'll work on the destination of the video. So you will select configure broadcast, then set up new destination. So here's a list of the content delivery networks we have native integration for. If you're not using one of these platforms, don't worry. We can also do a custom RTMP or RTMPS. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities here. For our purposes, we're gonna select Facebook. That will bring us to this page where we'll see our authentication code. We'll go ahead and click on that to copy it to our clipboard and then select the link in step two to log in to our Facebook account. After we've logged in, it will bring up this page where we paste our authentication code and hit continue. We'll hit continue, OK, and OK again. This is essentially giving the app permission to post on our timeline. Once that's completed, we'll see this green check mark, which means we're connected. We'll hit next, which will bring us back to this page and then over to Facebook settings. This is where you can do things like select your destination, control privacy, and title your video. If we hit this timeline button up top here, you'll see that you can also stream to pages or groups. We're gonna stick with timeline, so we'll leave that one as is. Next, we'll go to our privacy settings. We're gonna choose public, but you could also go with friends, friends of friends, or only me. Next, we're going to title our video and add a description. We'll call this video go stream, then hit apply and home. That will bring us back to this page. So the last thing we're gonna do before we go live is check out our video audio settings. We'll start by hitting settings, then selecting video audio, and again selecting video audio. That will bring up this page, which has all of our audio settings, embedded, analog, disabled. Since we're a hardwired line, we'll choose analog. Everything else looks good, hit apply. Next, we'll wanna check out our video settings. So we'll hit back, settings, and select broadcast. Then hit quality. That will bring us to this page where we're going to select our bit rate. We have a number of preset bit rates to choose from depending on your internet speed and streaming destination requirements. For our purposes, we're gonna choose HD five megabits per second. There's also a number of audio settings. We're gonna leave it on auto. And then the frame rate, we will keep at full as well. We'll hit apply. We'll go back to broadcast, settings, and select done. Now that we've checked our video and audio settings, we're ready to go live with our broadcast. We'll do that by pressing the center broadcast button here. It's also possible to stop and start your broadcast using the red button on the front of your video go device. Now we'll close out of the app and go over to Facebook to check out our live stream. And it looks like we are up and running. When you wanna stop your broadcast, you can do it through that same button in the app or the red button on the front of the video go as previously discussed. And that's the basic setup for a video go. Feel free to stop by our website for more in-depth information and happy streaming.